the next 30 minutes could change your life. It is my privilege to get to be with you again. Hi, I'm Ron Carpenter, Pastor Ron Carpenter, Pastor Redemption World Outreach Center in Greenville, South Carolina, and I get to be your host for another Redemption with Ron Carpenter program, and this is going to be awesome. You say you say that every time we come together, because I believe that every time we come together. The Word of God can't return void. If you ever have Word going forth in your life and coming out of your life, it can never return to God void. There's got to be some fruit come out of this time that the Word makes a deposit in you somewhere. Hallelujah. I don't want to get to preaching, but that gets me excited. I hope that you've been enjoying the series that we've been preaching, and I just want to let you know that while we have been studying through the book of Ruth, there's some things that you need to be paying close attention to. I'm trying to compare and contrast principles from this book with how Jesus always talked about his favorite subject, the kingdom. Jesus likened the kingdom to many things. And so I'm trying to take this book and give you a well-rounded perspective on what was this kingdom that Jesus was so obsessed with that he talked about so much and how can it be in me and how can I walk in it and make it a part of my daily lifestyle. I'm going to tell you that and a whole lot more, but we got to go watch this first. So I need to be quiet here and let you hear what I said there. So I'll see you again in just a minute. Sometimes God has to create difficulty to get you to move into something that you would not move into on your own. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying yet. Sometimes your difficulty is nothing but the tool of God and your enemy is even an instrument in the hand of God to get you to close out a chapter and open up another chapter because you will not continue moving by yourself. God has to do something to move you for you. <laughs> Am I preaching all right? Is this okay? So at midnight, you got to understand, sometimes the thing that closes out one day and opens up the beginning of a new day is the praise that is in your mouth. Some of you are waiting on God to do something, and you're not realizing that the dawning of your next season is in your mouth. And if you would stop complaining about how bad the last year has been and start praising in the new year, something might open up that could shift your life into a new level and a new dimension. <laughs> they didn't grumble about the season of chains. They didn't gripe about the season of captivity. They praised about the possible door opening and what could be before them if they kept the praise in their mouth. And some of you are going to stay in the captivity until you learn how to praise in the middle of the captivity. Can I go deeper? <laughs> now, the Bible says that all the prisoners were listening. I talked a little bit about that. Don't want to go back into that. Somebody's always watching you in the middle of your struggle. But the jailer, the jailer is there to ensure the captivity. He's there to make sure that the captivity you're in stays there. How many of you feel like the enemy's been so focused on you? that he's actually had like demons assigned to make uh, somebody, somebody ain't lived long enough yet. It's almost like he has, he has assigned demons at your address to ensure that the season you're in that you never get out of it, okay? Do you understand that they praised right in the midst of the jailer? Have you ever been able to stare the devil right in the face and say, devil, I want you to know I'm gonna praise him anyhow. I'm gonna praise God anyhow. You can stand here and look like you've got me tied up, but when I call on the name of Jesus, O oh jailer, there's something happening that I don't see, but I know that it's in the atmosphere, and you think you have power on, over me, but God has not authorized you to keep me here. God has authorized my release, 
and you jailer are just a tool in the hand of God and once you see me come out then my works will testify to you uh, uh. <laughs> see you need to look at your jailer and say no weapon formed against me shall prosper because my God is the one that created the one who's trying to come against me. My God tells him what he can do. My God tells him how far he can go. My God tells him what weapon he can use. My God tells him just how many steps he can take. My God is in control of my life, not the jailer, not the chains, not the prison. And if I can just praise him, God will come into my environment and show my enemy who my daddy really is. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yay. Yay. Y'all preaching me too hard. Jailer don't know nothing about Jesus running out wanting to get saved. Quit apologizing for how we praise God. Quit being scared to invite people because of how we're outy we act. Quit being scared to bring people in here and let them see how you really get before your God. My God, it's about time they go to a church that don't bore the life out of them. Let them come in here and see how you dance before God. Let them come in here and see testimonies. Let them come in here and see people cry. Nobody got up and warned the jailer, well, this is how we do church, and we don't want to offend you, and we don't want you to get upset. Come in here and praise him in such a way that conviction falls on every sinner, and power comes on every sin, and power comes on every sickness and addiction, and people run to the altar saying, I don't know who's in this building, but I need him. I don't know what's going on, but I need it. Can you praise a God like that? Somebody tap your name and say, quit apologizing and praising. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no. 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 All right. You got to give me some more time. Somebody said, give him some more time. The door was locked. I'm going to need a minute here. I can't do this in five minutes. Just, just roll with me. <clears throat> the door was locked. In the kingdom, there are keys. There are windows. There are different types of ground. There are gates. And there are doors. You've got to understand, Jesus, when Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus made a statement about the kingdom. He said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. But you were, this was revealed by my Father, which is in heaven. And I'm going to give you the keys <coughs> of the kingdom, which makes known to us heaven is accessible. But keys are involved. Okay? Now, throw on there, guys, if we got time. Throw on there. <coughs> Second Corinthians 4, 18. 2 Corinthians 4.18 While we do not look at the things which are seen but the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not are eternal the kingdom is invisible but it's more real than what you live in because what you live in flows out of what you can't see what you see is temporary and it came out of what is eternal. The thing that really seems real to you is going to pass away. The Bible says earth is going to pass away. There's a time where this body passes away. <clears throat> people, how many of you know people come and go and pass away? Relationships come, okay, all the stuff that we can see, touch, smell, taste, it, it all passes away. But there is a kingdom which is unseen, which is eternal, and God says, fix your eyes on that one, not this one. 
This one will blind you to that one. The enemy does not want you to access the kingdom you can't see because it will radically change the things you can see. Am I confusing you at all? Your enemy does not want you to get the key to the thing you can't see because he wants to keep you trapped in the thing you can. In other words, the thing that was meant to be temporary, if he can keep you looking at it, the enemy can make it eternal. Some of you look confused. I'll say it again. What you're going through is temporary. But if the enemy can keep you focused on it, instead of accessing the other one, then he will make what was supposed to last a little while stay with you forever. While it was really intended that this stuff last a little while and the kingdom that's supposed to come in your life be a kingdom that never leaves. God Almighty, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm preaching this thing. Are you with me? Now, next scripture on the screen. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 through 6. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. The God of this world, the Bible says, is Satan. The Bible says he's the prince of the power of the air and the God of this world. All right, are you ready? Okay. The kingdom is not seen with these eyes. It's seen with the mind. <laughs> and your enemy blinds the mind. Lest the light of the gospel. What was Jesus' gospel? The kingdom. Lest the light of who you really are and what you really have ever comes on. Because if you ever get the kingdom, he has lost all hold on you. So he wants to blind you from eternal things by getting you focused on temporary things. So if he can keep you in your trouble, he can keep you out of your tomorrow. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Here in America, we are being fed a steady diet of loose boundaries and disrespect through the many media outlets available to us today. Ron Carpenter has designed his new series, How to Change Your Life in 10 Days, to help counter a culture of dishonor and gives you keys to a total turnaround in your life. Whatever you honor is drawn towards you, and whatever you honor gives you the ability to access. Whatever you disrespect will move away from you. And whatever you disrespect, you will never have the ability to access. Receive all 10 messages from How to Change Your Life in 10 Days on CD for your ministry gift of just $50 or on DVD for just $75 or more. Call, write, or visit roncarpenter.com to order this powerful series. These 10 messages will speak into your life with a level of impact like no other series has ever done before. Change your life in 10 days. Start today. And now, back to Redemption with Ron Carpenter. Can I keep rolling with this? God told, Jesus told the rich young ruler, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Your soul is your mind. And then he said, your mind. Love the Lord with all your soul and love him with all your mind. He said, love him with your mind twice. Why? Because your mind has been given the capacity for two areas. Your mind files past experiences in a file cabinet. And you can close the blinds, cut on the blues, and pull them out of the file and meditate on how bad your life has been anytime you want to. That's where the enemy, y'all ain't saying nothing. 
See, that's where the that's the part of your mind the enemy wants you to live in. Why does the Bible so many times forgetting those things which are behind you? In other words, he's saying, I've got to operate out of the other side of your mind than you are in right now. There's a side of your mind that remembers and files experiences, hurts, pains, needs, holes, all the deprivations of life, everything you didn't get, everything that didn't happen, everything that did happen. And it files it away and you can pull it back up and meditate on it day and night and hold yourself in that prison as long as you want to. It just depends on how many times you access that file cabinet. But there's another side of your mind called your imagination. It is the place where you have to envision the kingdom. So it's the place in the middle of sickness that you have to imagine what it would be like to no longer be sick. And it is an unseen realm, but it is very real in your imagination. And you can't let the enemy blind your mind to imagining yourself in your future because you keep pulling out the drawers full of your past. Y'all are just sitting there looking at me. And those of you that can't do nothing but cry over spilled milk every day. You have fixed your eyes on things that are seen. You have not forgotten your yesterday. You have not laid aside the weight that so easily besets you. And you keep bringing out those files and another day goes by. Another month goes by. Another year goes by. Some more hair falls out. You lose another tooth. And all of a sudden your life is over. And you've done nothing but live out of pain. But when God comes and says, I give you peace, nothing missing and nothing broken, I have got to forget how John got some of you and David got some of you and Rico got some of you and Tyrone got some of you and you're broken and your heart shattered and you don't even know no you got to start imagining yourself whole and you get the pieces of your life back and you start imagining yourself no broken pieces no indebtedness I'm not left with ruined credit I'm not left not any good I'm not left without value you've got to see who you really are and not what you've been through my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. When God says you're healed, you've got to see you without a walking cane. You've got to see you without that oxygen in your nose. You've got to see yourself not popping pills 10 times a day. You, got, you can't be blinded in your mind. Let your imagination go to work and catch the image of the light of God's glory. One more thought and I'll let you go. I'm working hard for this one. They're behind a door, Pastor Tim, that's locked. There's many different kind of doors. Let me run over here. Let me show you. This. Maybe one of the cameras can follow. Me. This is a I can open it myself door. My force will open this door. All I got to do is run carpenter. I didn't need the Holy Ghost. I didn't need to sow a seed. I just walked up to it and I opened it. And some of you are praying over doors you can open. I'm going to leave that alone. Quit asking God to open the door when all you got to get is lazy yourself up off the couch and go open the thing yourself. So there are doors that will open when I apply force. But there are other doors that have codes on them. 
there's other doors you but you don't I don't care what you you can hit it you can kick it you can bang it with your head it's not coming open till you know the code and so God has doors that only come open by code if you want to be healed you can't push that door call the elders together lay hands on the sick anoint them with oil don't pray any prayer pray the prayer of faith see there's a code Holly. Bible says if you have alt with your brother, go to him first. If, if, you, if you can't get it straightened out him, come and bring him to somebody else and do it with a witness. He said, if you can't do it then, bring him in the church. He said, there's a code. And that door will open, but you've got to go through the code. Woo! Then there are other doors that are presence doors. Pharmacies, uh, department stores, best buys, places like that. You walk up to a certain perimeter and it'll whoop. There's certain doors that only open up. You don't push it. It ain't no code. You got to get within a certain proximity. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Whoo! And at his right hand. <laughs> There's something, there's some pleasures and some joy you ain't going to get till you get in the perimeter that makes the door open. Oh, I feel like preaching. <laughs> then there are other doors that are timing doors. A lot of banks have gone to this. It's cut down on robbery because nobody can open it. There's just a certain timetable that it is assigned to be open. And if you don't get in it within that timetable, you have to wait till another cycle is completed. Y'all ain't... F Three days, the children of Israel said, let's go take the land. They said, we're not able. Twelve hours later, they came back and said, let's go take it. Door was closed. They couldn't. How long did the vault take to open? 40 years. They didn't go the moment it opened. They tried to come at a moment it wasn't open and couldn't go in. And they had to wait for another cycle to complete itself. If Brother Terrence was playing a song, and I started singing, when I call you, Jesus, you, I would have to wait Till he hit the measure where it said when I call you so I can jump in if I miss that door and he plays past it I'm going to let him play all the way through it until my opening comes back around to me because it's a timing door this is my third closing But the door Paul and Silas is behind is a locked door. A code won't open it. It don't open up when you get in a certain proximity. It cannot be opened with natural force. It's not on a timer. It's not meant to open because an enemy has put you in it. Those are the doors that demand God's force. There's no code to meet. There's no personal pressure you can apply. It's when something out of your control needs to move on your behalf. And that is when Paul and Silas understood the principle of praise. There is no natural remedy to get this door open. And it really was not praise that made the door. It wasn't like praise went the door and go, Shh. it was understanding that praise brought God in the room and the room was not big enough for God. And so when God comes in, he has to make space for his presence to come in. And some of you that are in a tight spot, if you would just learn that only thing that's going to make this door open is your praise because God has to come in and make space. And while he's making space, your door will just open up. 
for anybody in here that is behind a locked door, I'm going to give you 60 seconds. If you ain't behind a locked one, don't do it. But if you got a door only God can open, shut! If you'd like to have this teaching as a part of your own personal archive and listen to it as much and as many times as you would like, it's called Start Here. Why did I name it Start Here? Because a lifestyle of praise and worship is absolutely critical for you to get going in your life to continue to deepen your walk with God. And you got to understand, praise is a weapon in your mouth against every obstacle that your enemy would bring you away. Hallelujah. That's another sermon that's in that, so you'll have to come online and see what we're talking about but call us go online we want to connect with you email email us tell us your testimonies i want to know what god's doing in your life i want to know is this word making a difference i want to hear the fruitfulness that's being born out of this i want to connect with you on a daily basis i got a lot of i wants right here don't i i want you to follow on twitter and on facebook why because i talk a lot more than just during this program many times during the day things concerning prayer, nuggets that we pull from the messages, scriptures that God's laid on my heart. Just sometimes something just personal, something just ridiculous, something just me and my wife or me and my kids because I want to have fun. I want us to have a connection together, relate to you as best I can, even though we may be stretched many miles apart. For those of you who have been giving for a long time, I say thank you. For those of you who would like to start that habit and this is a ministry that you're looking at giving into, I want to tell you something. I have a teaching that I just finished called the restoration principle. I haven't met anybody, no matter how good their life has been, that does not have some season of their life they wish they could have a do-over. They wish they could do it again. They have a regret. They wish they had something they could change or they would choose a different route. Well, what does God say about that? God really says you haven't lost anything because there's nothing that you feel like you've lost that he can't go back and give you, but you got to know the keys of how that works. I teach you in this teaching called the Restoration Principle. It is six teachings. Hear me well now. For those of you who would like to give for the first time and become a covenant partner, for your first gift of any amount, I want to give back. I'm going to put these six teachings in your hand. I believe they're revolutionary. I'd love for you to have them. It's always a pleasure to get to spend this time with you. It's one of the most enjoyable moments of my week. Thank you for tuning in. May God do something rich in your life. And when I see you again, may life be better than it was today because of this word. God bless you.